for further reading. So I just put that on the back in case anybody was curious about how to get a free lunch. Good morning. Good morning. Yes. Our first reading for Sunday talks about how to get a free lunch. Um, from Isaiah 55. But our gospel is in Luke 13. So that's always exciting. Why bad things happen to good people. And bad things don't happen to bad people. And as we get to the end of the scripture, you'll see I'm really tempted to contact a few of the local um, farmers and get bring a, in some manure. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I don't know what that would do I to could worship. Scrape some off on my boots. <laughs> Make live streaming even more attractive. Oh yeah. We don't have the scratch and sniff on Facebook yet. So. <laughs> mm. well, I, uh, I remember those growing up. The scratch and sniff. Oh, yeah. And for some reason, my sinuses, for most of them, weren't good enough to pick up any sense of smell. Some of them you could, but I still remember hearing stories of uh, some of the more unique movies would um, oh, yeah. have a scent. smell of vision smell of vision mm -hmm. yeah. or, yeah. or the buy popcorn concession stand open. Yeah, mm -hmm. have subliminal those. messages. Mm -hmm. I like the Disney World, they had one theater where the seats move to make it feel like there's a bug crawling across your back. Oh, jeez. And then it sprays water on you to make make you feel like you're getting spit at. Oh, good boy. Yeah. And now I just go on Netflix and it's just a plain TV looking back at me. But, yep, we're continuing through Lent. We are in... Are we on third Sunday in Lent, and so pretty exciting stuff. We're slowly getting towards Easter, which means spring will be here soon, which almost feels that way today. Except for I pulled into the dry parking lot here, and wow, that's so wet. So <laughs> it dried a little bit. Okay, well, let us begin with a word of prayer. Eternal Lord, your kingdom has broken into our troubled world through the life, death, and resurrection of your Son. Help us to hear your word and obey it, so that we become instruments of your redeeming love through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Well, the reading, gospel reading is from Luke chapter 13, verses 1 through 9. Here, when Jesus is asked about tragic events, he turns to the lesson about whether suffering is deserved into a hard call to obedience. He then tells a parable that holds out hope that the timeline for ultimate judgment will be tempered by patience. Well, at that time, there were some present who told him about the Galileans whose blood Pilate had mingled with their sacrifices. Jesus asked them, Do you think that because these Galileans suffered in this way, they were worse sinners than all other Galileans? No, I tell you, but unless you repent, you will all perish as they did or those 18 who were killed when the Tower of Siloam fell on them, do you think that they were worse offenders than all others living in Jerusalem? No, I tell you, but unless you repent, you will all perish just as they did. Then Jesus told this parable. A man had a fig tree planted in his vineyard, and he came looking for fruit on it and found none. So he said to the gardener, See here, for three years I have come looking for fruit on this fig tree, and still I find none. Cut it down. Why should it be wasting the soil? And he replied, Sir, let it alone for one more year, until I dig around it and put manure on it. If it bears fruit next year, well and good, but if not, you can cut it down. The Gospel of our Lord. Why did Pilate mix the Galileans' blood with theirs? Well, one of the assumptions is that he may have thought they were partaking in a revolt. And when somebody's revolting against the, the Roman government, you put them down and you put them down hard. And so okay, it's thought that there Did it have something else to do with the Jewish custom of everything being... Yeah, blood was unclean, and so unclean. it tainted their sacrifice. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the Romans had So it was the worst authority. kind of thing he could do to defile their sacrifices. Yeah. Hmm. 
along with That's killing sick. them. That's sick, yeah. But, uh, yeah, yeah. But yeah, he was, the Romans were not known for their compassion and their humanity. Unless, of course, you were rich I love and the, a Roman. I love the image, too, of the fig tree bearing fruit. And mm -hmm. Maybe you have a farmer mentality with that, too, huh? Yeah. Mm -hmm. it's all yeah, growing things. Yep. It's also meant to tell us the story about God's patience. I mean, oh, yeah. you got one, you know, it's, I don't know if you remember when your kids were younger, you have one more chance. Mm -hmm. I'll give you, you one your, more chance, mm -hmm. and then everything comes to an end. But you put your seed in the ground, you hope yeah. it for fair weather and all that. And, you know. Yeah. Okay. Well, at first glance, this passage appears strange and awkward for Luke, not typical of his writings. It has no parallel in the other Gospels. This passage might need to be read several times to grasp the flow of it. So what is your initial reaction to this passage? I answered two of those already. Yeah. Sorry. It's a hard one. So, but, yeah. And many times, too, you have to look at something more than once to, to see what that is trying to say to you. Mm -hmm. It's very... I, no, go ahead. No, go ahead. I was say, it's very graphic and specific in his examples. Mm -hmm. And his parables, I think, are, are they meant to stick with you? If you can relate to them. Mm -hmm. I know when we were talking the other day with Marvin about the different translations of the Bible. Oh, yeah. And his comment to me, and I think he's got something. The old King James is poetic. And it just flows when you have to memorize something. Because it just kind of leads into the next thing. And sometimes scripture does does that you just um, can relate to some of the parables or stories or yeah. information yeah. so so what what do you sense the major theme what do you sense the major theme of the passage what is the major theme of the passage We use to the patience of, of, of what we have to wait on. Um, I think the other one, though, is <clears throat> don't think you're better than everybody else. Mm -hmm. I mean, we were talking about the text study, how easy it is to, for us to think, well, because their sins are so much worse than mine that mm -hmm. bad things happen to them. And, and that's, you know, not always true. Sometimes bad things just happen. And, you know, for, you know once you throw out, what is it, in jo John's Gospel, you know, he who has no sin may throw the first stone out. I mean, we don't uh, always recognize the sinfulness that we have. And how we need repentance. Mm -hmm. So why do you think this passage is part of the lectionary, Latin lectionary? Lent is a typical time of um, repentance, of evaluating where you are and light with God. So, it, well, you know. Okay, now let's come back. We'll see what happens. Sorry yeah. about that. Every once in a while, we our internet goes wonky. So, okay. But yeah, our Lenten is a time to look at repentance and why we should repent. And Jesus is calling for us to spread spirit manure on ourselves so we get uh, a little bit more fruitful hmm. yeah not, don't do that on Sunday morning though <laughs> and being mindful of the people that were gee. yes technology is great I love technology until it's not move the tables next tomorrow next week okay 
Well, this passage brings up memories of children who describe the poor behavior of another child with the clear hope of winning favor with the teacher considering their own actions. In this case, the complaint is against the Galileans who took impure blood and mingled it with the sacrifices, making it all impure. Those who are telling this story are highly offended at such disrespectful, barbaric behavior. Jesus does not appear to be shocked. Instead, he redirects the attention towards the tattlers by placing the emphasis on you. No, I tell you, but unless you repent, you will all perish as they did. This is repeated again several verses later. I tell you, but unless you repent, you will all perish as they did. In addition, Jesus reminds the crowd of the collapse of Siloam's tower, killing 18 people. Not all who die in tragic events are worse offenders. Bad things can happen to good people. So how might the crowd react to the words of Jesus? Well, that's a good correlation, the tattle tailors. Yeah. And, and, well, uh, the shock that he would say that they're not worse. Um, you know, I suppose they thought they were... This is what they expected uh, to hear. Yeah. They were above this. They mm -hmm. were paddling on somebody. Here's the admonishment that you better repent or you'll all perish just as they did. Probably yeah. not what they expected to come out of him. Yeah, well, I'm a good person. That stuff doesn't happen yeah. to me. Yeah. I have to admit, I don't like the illustration of tattling because at some point you do have to tattle. So when he makes death threats and violence, it's yeah. it's more than just one-upmanship. There needs to be a differentiation and an understanding those. So what is the message for us? Just pay attention to yourself and what you're doing. Kids love dragging somebody else out. You know, maybe I'll stay off punishment if I point the finger at somebody, somebody else. else. Yeah. yeah. God, will that get me off the hook? Well, no, no but. Yeah, it's one thing I like about Harry Potter's first movie is Draco Malfoy is tattling on the three friends for running out of the uh, school and visiting um, Hagrid. And oh, yeah. He's, all of a sudden he hears the punishment. He's included oh, yeah, he's because in he right. too left. Okay, well, Jesus shifts the conversation by telling a parable of a man who owns a fig tree, but the tree bears no fruit. Seeing no benefit or beauty in having such a tree, the owner orders the fig tree to be cut down by the gardener. Despite the years of invested in, years invested in growing a fig tree, there is little patience for something so unproductive. Despite being a servant, the gardener boldly defends the tree and requests one more year, but not a year with the same care, same care of the tree. Instead, the gardener offers us to nurture and care for the tree by digging around it and putting manure on it. He concludes with this practical advice. If it is good, but if not, you can cut it down. So what surprises you about this parable? But normally he doesn't give up after three years. You know, I I guess. Is a fig tree difficult to grow? Yeah, is there that I'm not familiar. It's a parable of patience. Yeah. There's still time to repent, or yeah. How can Jesus call for repentance and follow his remarks to the parable of patience? Yeah, it's... I think yeah, adding, to me, adding the manure to a tree that's not growing yeah. well is kind of like us. We need to hear God's word. We need to be with God. Yeah. Other Christians, in order to grow mm -hmm. and, and be, be fruitful, yeah. Or it's um, one of the things I've heard about kids is, you know, the one thing that a child needs to really thrive in life is at least one adult who cares about them. Mm -hmm. You know, and how much difference like that Linda makes. Linda mentioned in Bible study too about uh, um, she's a lunch lady that has been oh. Linda Bucky and. Yeah. Yeah smile yeah you know because oh, it yeah. might be the only smile that they get mm -hmm. she always you know and she well she yeah so it was her mother yes. they were both yeah, so just, yeah. 
rebroadcast. Well, I think about, you know, one of the things when I was a supervisor is, you know, you see somebody who's not living, not working up to their, the potential you need. And you create a plan saying, you know, do X, Y, and Z. And in a few months, we'll check and see how things are going. And if they go well, you have a really good and fruitful employee. And if not, you know, at some point you have to look at what's best for everyone. But that can be difficult. Old habits can be difficult to break, even when the new behavior might bring healthy health and vitality. Ultimately, fruit is expected. Okay, now to the word among us. Prince of Peace is an active urban congregation in the South, had a legacy of ministry in the community, but recently conflicts and strife had developed within the leadership and threatened the splinter of the church. Respect and trust had eroded between the council and the pastor. Consequently, the newly appointed mutual ministry team was asked to intervene on their first assignment. No one quite knew what to expect from them. <coughs> the council meeting was called to order with the mutual ministry team being the first item on the agenda. Tension in the air was taut. Slowly and calmly, a representative from the mutual ministry team stood up and began the introductory, introductionary remarks. All was quiet in the room as the group listened, generally listened. The representative lifted up the benefits of dialogue, sharing her own personal story of being a leader in the community during the desegregation of schools in the South. Those, in, those were difficult days as leaders. The children, youth, teachers, staff, and community were counting on leaders, finding a way to dialogue and to move forward, and so they did. Her remarks concluded, people must choose to dialogue and choose to listen to each other. The group appeared ready for dialogue, but she sat down. There was silence. She explained that sometimes patience is needed. Change takes time. So what in your life needs change? Well, I can relate to that. We're making yeah. a big change. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And it's not always because you want to. Right. Change can happen for many reasons. Oh, yeah. And I, the important thing about change is to learn to adapt or, or try to, there's patience, oh, yeah. change. About, uh, yeah, think about, the, you know, for me it's trying to exercise more, trying to keep on that. Mm -hmm. Worship while we have the Wednesday night services. study or two. Yeah. So what conversations and dialogues are needed to bring about that change? Being open You're with right. each other. Yeah. I think. And not being defensive. Getting defensive. Well, what if this happens in your life? We yeah. have to particularly when you're getting older and you know yes. oh, gosh, things yes. could happen. Yeah. Yeah, I think going back to our gospel is, you know, the other, with the dialogue and conversation. Listen, yeah. Same, yeah. It's like when we had the teacher strike here and they had to bring someone in from the outside yeah. to make some kind of difference because, you know, it got to the point where nobody was listening. Yeah. You know, it was just too mm -hmm. hard. It's emotional yeah. more than, yeah. Emotional, yeah. Yes, yes. And it gets really emotional when you're in church and you, when arguments happen. Mm -hmm. When does your church their vote um, I don't know yet yeah but there is the, going to be a vote uh, two more votes yeah mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. it's a big congregation isn't it but it's dwindled yeah. well, really dwindled yeah. no, well, nobody likes conflict no no so, well there is is there a need to have an internal dialogue when you bring about change Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely have to be able to think internally why you want to that so and so we got oh. so and so and it's like I can't do this anymore. You know, the first time I tried and mm -hmm. you know, because I hadn't planned what do I get when I get to those parts that are just <laughs> yeah. really well, hard to read. Yeah. And uh it's yeah. it, the Bible is they, not written to be read aloud. It it is yeah. It is but written in you had zero idea that they were 
connected yeah. at all. Yep. Oh, that makes sense now. Well, <laughs> did you want to hear that 72,000 times like the Bible? Yeah. yeah. Just on and on and on. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Holy Spirit assist. Oh. Yeah. He's got That's our back. Right. So guiding light. Yeah. Okay. Well, clearly Jesus expects repentance, change behavior, redirect our attention to follow him. Lent is your but change is difficult. Even if God even if it even if God who is orchestrating the change. Fortunately God is a patient God. The harshness of the owner of the fig tree who wants the tree whacked in order to get a more productive crop and is contrasted with a patient gardener who is up God's patience and grace. So which of these is closer to your image of God from your childhood? Um, I didn't grow up with the kind of uh, preaching, the hellfire and rhetoric that used to come from the pulpits, you know, the constant without that, that image. Uh -huh. um, but... Um, and you can understand loving God is a much yeah. And you can understand why people would have shied away from well, they didn't any have kind a of religion. Oh. You were on the right side. And they you said, had to do whatever it took to make sure people were coming with you. A lot of people that came here were very, very strict uh, adherence mm. to their faith, and um, mm. it was a very, yeah, very strict. I don't think, do they? A reminder that Catholics have to go to Mass on Sunday. And that's their last chance, their last call. Mm -hmm. I mean, the idea that you have to do this. And, you know, and it's, and so for some denominations, it's, it is more a matter of things you have. Like Lenten services, Bible study, church services. The live streaming, which for some has become their way of going to church, yeah. is better than nothing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We're touching shut-in people that yeah. wouldn't even step yeah. foot in here if they yeah. have the technology. Some, yeah. like 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 I said, just mm -hmm. to to give someone a smile, be kind. Mm -hmm. It doesn't hurt to be kind to everyone. No, no, mm -hmm. it doesn't. I was thinking about change. COVID has really is going to continue yes. if one believes what you're hearing. Uh, I try it's not so to. hard to know what to believe because we've we've been started out from the whole thing with wrong people telling us. Just because how did you know? I've heard our governor vilified. I, I may not be that political party, but I have mighty deep sentiment for him that mm -hmm. he's had to endure this, and he will continue yeah. to endure this. This is not over. And you're trying to make a right decision with whatever information you get, trusting that whatever you're told is the deal. Yeah, trusting what that information yeah. you're being given. That's yes. the hard part. It's yeah. trying to make information as quickly as you can well, with as little you, information as you have. You people but don't lie people. Yeah. Oh, yeah, and and they to me, they, they wouldn't know. They should make up stupid stuff. Mm -hmm. But they're asked to make statements. Well, they should say, to, I, I don't know. know. That's, That's the, the downside of, the of this device. Yeah. 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 Yes. I don't know. Yes. Yeah. People Look at want all the stuff pictures. on Facebook that we saw. That we still see. People want to see and hear. Yeah. It's it's really what we call the new. Yep, that's a yeah, being in prayer, having scripture opened up in new ways when you reread it. And though I'm still not sure I'm called to bring a. <laughs> Well, I still remember this now. I mean, in, in uh, college, we had a cattle farm near us, and oh, yeah. we'd be running our, our so the students. We'd hit that and go, you know, start gagging. And, oh, yeah. yeah. You know, I hit it and remind you of coming out to visit great grandpa and grandma. <laughs> yeah. You know, you're it, it's down your perspective. 
And they have Anna Lee doesn't listen fields. to the Bible study, so yeah. I should be safe. Yeah. <laughs> We're never yeah. safe. Be patient with us. Please be patient with us. Amen. You hear the invitation to the meal in Isaiah 55, 1 through 9. Um, change your ways by having your daily devotion.